Welcome everyone to an excellent game between myself as Korn going up against a rubber duck of war as the forces of the Warriors of Chaos. Now on the flanks we are going to have two units of the Marauder Great Weapons and for the main meat of the battle we are going to have the Severed Claw, the Regiment of Renowned Aspiring Champions with those glorious halberds. Look at those things, they're absolutely fantastic. And they're going to have bucket loads of weapon strength, including a bonus for Sludge of 30, which is going to match Slayers there from the Dwarfs. 108 leadership, great armor, great melee stats. These bad boys really are going to be a formidable foe. So for the Lord Choice, we are going to have the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Zinch Magic. And he's going to be there on a Chaos War Shrine, which gives some amazing bonuses there in melee combat. So he's going to have the Change Ability, which is going to give that replenishment there for the barriers for all of those Zinch units. We're also going to be having the Arcane Conduit, the Fires of Change, Evasion, and then the abilities of the Favor of the Ruinous Powers, and then also the Giver of Arcane Glory. So for the spells, we are going to have the Infernal Gateway, and then also the Pink Fire of Zinch. We're also going to have the Sword of Change, which you can actually get a summon of the Chaos Spawn. In the backside, we're also going to be having the Summoners of Range. They've also seen some nice updates coming with this beautiful raw blue here in the backside. They're also going to have the Chain Lightning spell, and uh, these boys really do thump very, very hard indeed. So for the last unit, we are going to be having Thunderguff. So he's going to be a fantastic new Chaos Giant from Nurgle, who is going to be having the Violent Wind. Now you may think, what is going to be so awful that corrodes armor and creates this massive armor-piercing wind? Well, basically, he's so vile that when he farts, it creates a Vortex spell. And uh, we're certainly going to be seeing that in the battle. It's rather interesting indeed, and I, I can't wait to show him off to you guys. So for myself, we are going to go uh, a little bit wide here, and I really, really want to focus on these boys. They are very, very powerful indeed. They're going to be the Chosen of Corn dual weapons. So these Berserkers are incredibly powerful. They are so goddamn powerful that they're going to be having 76 bonus for infantry of 10 on their weapon strength per model. Now going up to 80 there by the looks, and uh, good melee stats, 130 armor. And, uh, of course, you know, spell resistance now, which is going to be across the board here for Corn, And uh, they are incredibly powerful. The new Marauders of Corn here with the dual weapons. These bad boys have more armor, more weapon strength, more melee stats. We can see that melee defense really isn't much uh, for the eye to look at. And then we're also going to have more of the Marauders of Corn coming in this beautiful red. In the sky, we are going to have the lady herself, Valkyr the Bloody. And uh, let's get a nice big look. She's actually uh, a rather small character to uh, get hold of but she's going to be having the scarlet armor alongside here the gaze of corn and then we're also going to have the demon shield and the spear of i'm not even going to try and pronounce that name but she's going to have her spear and that's uh, a phenomenal spell there indeed that's going to be a bounce spell that does some tremendous damage in the sky we're going to have probably one of my favorite units in the game which is going to be these beautiful boys the knights of the blazing throne and uh, my god, they are powerful. Loads of anti infantry bucket loads of charge bonus, 130 armor. They're just heavy metal, and they're ready to crash here with their nice ability, the Murderous Charge, which increases their mass, charge bonus, speed charge, and then also acceleration. So these boys are absolutely furious to watch as they go into melee combat. So get a bit of a skip on here as the boys come towards the middle. There's a bit of a slow push here. Lots and lots of heavy armor and infantry. But, uh, you know, I really want to show off. I'm trying to hold back here the chosen corn dual weapons as I want to get forward. So we do actually come in and summon two units to the battlefield, which is going to be the Marauder Horsemen with the throwing axes. And you can see these flaming axes on their side. These boys are absolutely fantastic to watch. Now they're going to have some great stats, lots of armor piercing, and then flaming ammunition as their range. So they're going to be diving forward here. Nothing at the top here for me. So everything's going to be down on the floor. And now I'm going to be kind of using my Night Sigil to hold off the middle. But we do see the Summoners of Range coming down, which was a little bit scary there for me. Aspiring Champions coming to the battlefield. And the last unit for me here for Corn is actually going to be a unit of the Brutes of the Hound. So these bad boys, which are well known for Norska for being their regiment of renown, have now come to the Corn roster. So it's going to be very exciting to see them fight. On the floor, we are going to be having the Marauders. They're going to be fighting in the middle. Those throwing axes are going to be bonking on the front door there of Thunderguff. And he's going to be ready to uh, take them on like the uh, pure champion he is. We see the dual weapons doing some nice work down the middle. Now we're about to see Valkyr's first spell ability going down. And look at the damage! Dear God, 
And now we're going to see the fart coming down here from Thunder Guff as he farts in the middle up against all of these bad boys and ladies as he's going to be reducing the army here at the front. Throwing Axe is coming over the top, doing some good damage up against Thunder Guff. He really doesn't have much armor, but he's such a ginormous target that uh, there's going to be lots of axes coming. I love the fight animations as his axes come over the top. And yeah, they, this looks fantastic. There's something about ammunition being on fire that's just so goddamn awesome that, uh, you know, really does go a long way. Mortal Horsemen don't quite... Uh, oh no, they are actually going to be going over there to capture the point as we see some of these Marauders charging forward up against the Aspiring Champions. The Aspiring Champions only have 16 models. Uh, Fire Axe is coming over the top, doing quite a lot of damage up against my own Marauders. These bad boys will hold them back for a while, but of course 46 melee defense is, you know, quite a bit to uh, push through. The two units here are going to be surrounding the Champions. Uh, should be able to do some nice work indeed. In the middle, Thunder Guff is going to get protected here by the Severed Claw, which you have the Marauders still fighting. I'm just going to be holding back here with uh, my Chosen. They're now going to be fighting up against the Marauder. Great weapons. You think great weapons might be doing quite well here, but they just really don't have the melee stats to back it up. I mean, 56 on 49 is absolutely crazy. These boys do cost 1,650 gold, so you better hope that they pay for it. On the battlefield, we are going to get some Forsaken of Corn. They're going to be charging forward. And uh, these bad boys are a little bit more scary than I thought they were going to be. I looked at their stats and I thought, well, most of the Forsaken play for Frenzy anyway, but these ones, you know, it's one of their faction traits. They just get Frenzy. So I thought, well, it's going to be nothing special here. So I'm charging them forward and thinking, yeah, they're not going to do very much, but we'll see. But we do actually manage to get some Chaos Spawn on the battlefield. These boys have been summoned thanks to the Lord Choice. But now we actually have the Forsaken going through, and these boys really don't have much towards to them. They are actually going to degrade as they are a summon, but uh, yeah, they're going to get shredded through here by the Forsaken. So uh, Thunder Guff is going to push forward, try and fight where he can. And it's like we're getting on here with the Chosen. And at the top, we're going to be fighting here a little bit more. So we're going to get some throwing axes coming to the side with the Knights of the Blazing Throne. As they're going to be doing some good damage up against the Summoners of Rage. So some nice close battle here as we are going to have Valkyr fighting up against all of these ginormous Summoners of Rage. These Ogres are fantastic in melee combat. Anti-large armor piercing, mass weapon strength per model. And uh, yeah, these Dragon Ogres really do bring the hurting. So she's going to be fighting with the Demon Shield, which makes her actually take no damage for 13 seconds, I believe. So yeah, she's pretty much impervious for a, a very strong period of time. Some of the Rage is going to be going down rather quickly. And in the backside, we actually see a summon here of the Soul of Damnation. The big bad boy here with the Chaos Dwarfs in tow are going to be summoning to fire all of the Doom here on the battlefield as they're going to shoot up against my Marauder Horseman. So start charging forward here with some of the Knights of the Blazing Throne. They're going to go forward and deal with those. Rampaging is going to be the Bruce of the Hound as they slaughter many of the Marauders here with those uh, lovely purple shields, I must say so. But the Summoners, they've had enough. They're going to get pushed off. Throwing axes are in tow. And down on the floor here, we do see the Sever Claw has suffered at the might of the Forsaken and also some of these fantastic Chosen of Corn dual weapons. So a really nice spell down the line here. We are going to see a Pig Flame doing some pretty good damage, but the Severed Claw certainly have been beaten apart. Only having 16 models is uh, rather tough indeed. We do see Thunder Guff fighting in the middle, actually breaking some of the Marauders of Corn. But uh, yeah, we do see the Forsaken holding rather nicely in the middle. On the top here, going to be pushing off the Chaos Warhounds. Ducky's really trying to pressure on top of Domination Point 1. Uh, we are going to be winning here, 1,300 up against 1,000. Pretty close game here so far, but we do get a bit of a sandwich going down here on top of his Marauders. It's going to be, uh, you know, Marauders of Corn will uh, definitely outdo just the regular Marauders. Uh, they're going to go down rather quickly here. 45 melee attack here from these Marauders is scary indeed. So they're going to be shredding through rather quickly. Horsemen as well, going to be wavering on the outside, but most of my ammunition have gone. I only have 12 there per unit and now we're going to actually get the mirror guard going forward the beautiful boys in silver and purple charging forward screaming the name here as they go forward for corn trying to charge up against one of the most epic fights there is in warhammer chosen dual weapons going to be shredding through this heavily armored melee defense unit as they shimmer in the light and fight here up against some of the most badass units in warhammer as we have some of these chosen look how slow they are in so much armor these boys are absolutely fantastic, tiptoeing to the front line as he does. And he's going to be fighting against the Mirror Guard, which is so fantastic. The Mirror Guard are getting absolutely thumped. 54 melee defense. And you can see the Chosen really have just spanked them. Marauder Horseman going to charge in here, get a nice side charge. And then they're going to get in round the back as well. And they're just going to be collapsing on the Mirror Guard, which is fantastic to see. 
Uh, they do actually have bonusless infantry in melee combat. I don't think it's too much. It's five, which is, you know, it's better than nothing, I guess. But, um, yeah, it's not too much to write home about. Still on the battlefield, the Knights of the Brazen Throne, the Skull Crushers, still going to be going here on the battlefield. And, my God, they are just scary. Look at that thick black with sort of that kind of bronze on top. It's just absolutely fantastic with those flaming axes are ready to go here up against the front line. We are going to get some summons of the Poison Warhounds in the backside and then we are going to be having some of the Marauder Great Weapons dawning us here on the battlefield. Look at those ginormous battle axes coming to the battlefield here. They should be able to come forward through the fields and fight here at the top of Arnheim. In the middle we are going to see a Marauder Horseman and then the Bruce of the Hound returning to the battlefield. I love these unbreakable brutes as they charge forward. These berserkers are so fun to use. And uh, yeah, I really wanted a theme of just so much melee prowess. In the middle, we are going to be having some Chaos Warriors with Halberds. Uh, more Marauders with dual weapons going forward. And a lot of these Marauder throwing axes have been dealt with. In the middle, looks like we do break down the Mirror Guard. We have some more great weapons fighting as well. And eventually... The Chosen Corn dual weapons are going to be falling. They are down to four models, and they have had eventually enough here. And my god, I'm sure they're exhausted. They've gone through 180 kills so far. That is some fantastic work indeed. Over on the side, we are going to be seeing Valkyrie the Bloody. She's going to be flying around really fast here as well, so 95 speed. And she's going to be in tow there with the Bloodthirster. On the side, we do see some of the Chaos Warhounds. She's going to be going over there just to say hello. And, uh, you know, you can see they're wavering just at the presence of her might. They charge in, and uh, they're going to be doing some lovely damage here. No models killed there, but we are going to be breaking them quite nicely. In the middle here, we do actually have some of the Marauders fighting here up against the Marauder Great Weapons. And, of course, you know, Marauders of Corn actually have some pretty decent armor. Now, we're going to be getting the uh, spear going down the line. And, oh, so much damage! She is such a great support character here across the battlefield. And uh, I think you get two or three of those abilities, but it just wrecks cheap infantry and does so much goddamn damage. Uh, this thing is scary indeed. It is 50% armor piercing, so it could be okay up against mid-tier infantry. Maybe doing pretty well there up against the Mirror Guard, it's hard to say. But still, yeah, pretty good stuff there. So the Mirror Guard are going to be falling down. Great weapons lose here up against the Halberds. And in the middle, Ducky is going to be pushing. So the Marauders are going to get that plus melee attack as well. Look at those stats. 69 melee attack. I'm not sure if they're Slanesh or not, but they are going to be fighting here up against the Broader Great Weapons. They're going to be thumping really hard, but sadly they are going to be falling. And it looks like here it is going to be the Ascendancy of Corn up against the Might of the Undivided. We actually see more of the Dragon Ogre coming across to fight here up against the Brutes of the Hound. And I think Ducky here probably would take the top after a short period of time. But I did have some Furies in the back pocket just in case. I thought maybe he might have a Skull Cannon or two in the backside. Uh, but it's like he had the Soul of Damnation. So I brought just two of them in the back pocket, just in case I wanted to bring them forwards um, to some of them in the later stage. But I thought here, um, uh, Ducky was a little bit annoyed about my uh, Skirmish Cavalry. And uh, I, I don't blame him, I don't blame him. They were rather powerful, actually, I must say. Uh, they were rather powerful indeed. But what an awesome game. I really wanted to show this one off, just to show off a couple of new units that are coming forward here for Warhammer 3. It wasn't so much... Um, about the competition and multiplayer, just more saying, hey, by the way, here are these units, and uh, look how goddamn bloody awesome they are. So, 880 there for the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Zinch. Now, he was going to be on the Chaos War Shrine. That maybe could or could not be great. You know, it gives some good leadership bonuses. It gives some good um, uh, sorcery mastery, which, which can be quite decent, especially when you have Zinch magic in the back pocket. Uh, it really can be uh, a nice bolster there for uh, all of the infantry units. We are going to have 600 value on Thunderguff. Is he going to be useful? I don't know. I don't know. Possibly for Nurgle, for sure. Uh, I don't know about the Warriors of Chaos. 1,700 there for the Summoners of Range. Yeah, still always a very, very strong pick. 470 for the Severed Claw. This makes me really sad. The Aspiring Champions are awesome. But you saw they had 90 weapon strength for 16 models. Yes, they have, you know, bonus as large of 30. And they have pretty decent armor-piercing stats. But... If you take the chosen dual weapons, they had 80 weapon strength for 80 models, which is just scary. Unbelievably scary. But 600 and uh, 300 there from the Marauders. But I think the Severed Claw, as awesome as they are, probably ought to be left at home there for multiplayer. But 141 there for the Dragon Ogres. They didn't see too much action. Only 300 for the Soul of Damnation. 500 for the Aspiring Champions. 600 for the Mirror Guard. I thought they did pretty well, but of course they had to fight up against the uh, very, very powerful dual weapons. Uh, 430, 170, and 680 there from the Marauder Great Weapons. 
Uh, 56 and 38 there for the Chaos War Hounds with Poison. I think maybe if they come a little bit earlier on the battlefield, they would have caused a bit of problem there for my throwing axes. And uh, 270, 200 and 250 there for the regular Marauders. So for myself, 2,000 damage value for Valkyrie the Bloody. Uh, of course, she has a spear, she's anti-large and bucket loads of armor piercing with all of her bonuses as well. So, you know, she did pretty well there up against all the large entities. We're going to see 670 for the Knights of the Blazing Throne, but they had to take on uh, the Summoners of Rage, which were basically built to deal with big, heavy, large cavalry such as the Blazing Throne. So 2,950 damage value, 24,340 damage dealt there from the uh, the Chosen Berserkers. This is really what I wanted to show this for. These bad boys were exceptional. Like, I think, you know, maybe the idea might have been that the Skirmish Cavalry was just too much to deal with. I really think it was these guys. These guys were terrifying to fight against. You know, 130 armor, really good weapon strength, very, very decent melee attack. Bonus versus infantry as well. I think of... 10 if not more it's just incredibly scary to fight this unit 850 630 though from the marauder dual weapons with 700 and 720 there from the marauders of corn now the difference between the marauders of corn is they actually have decent armor they have 35 armor they actually have spell resistance and then they're also going to be having some pretty decent melee stats to fight up against other cheap infantry so they'll chew through rather quickly they've got some very decent value and uh, 1100 for the brute of the hound i really like where ca have gone they've put certain units in certain factions which is uh, you know really really fun um so for my backup we are going to i did actually have the hell Forge host they did get summoned they didn't really do anything uh 217 for the warriors of corn halberds 540 for the forsaken the jury's still out on these bad boys. They are, they certainly potentially have a place. I just don't know where that is right now. I think they could be very good in the future, but I'm not too sure. So if we look here at the throwing axes, 760, 1,300, 500, and 800. So one unit did incredibly well. Uh, the other three did pretty decent, considering I think they're 700 gold cost. Uh, it looks like two of them paid for themselves, one of them didn't, and then one of them did very well. And then, of course, the Fury is getting, you know, about 50 apiece. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this exhibition. I hope you really enjoyed seeing all of the fantastic new units coming forward. If you did, please smash that like button. Feel free to leave a comment down below of your brand new favorite unit here in Warhammer 3. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll be seeing you all in the next video or live stream.